To access the platform app builder exam guide, you'll want to go to trailhead.salesforce.com and then under credentials, you'll find the link for certifications. Click there and then you'll find platform app builder listed as one of the certifications under Salesforce administrator. If you scroll down, you'll find platform app builder here. Click there and that takes you to the platform app builder landing page for this particular certification. And from there for the exam guide, you can select get the exam guide. I'll link to this down below as well so that you can just jump to the exam guide. And at the time of this recording, it's for the winter 22 release and Salesforce does update the exam structure usually about once a year, but hopefully this will be close to accurate for whenever you're watching this. Now, a few things to highlight are there different sections as you scroll down or you can click the links to jump to whichever section you're interested in. There's some preliminary information about the actual credential or certification as well as the audience description for those that should try and pursue this certification. And a lot of times I structure my courses to give you that six months to a year of experience building applications on the Lightning platform. I realize that not everyone can get experience via a job and so that's why people like myself exist to create courses to mimic and help you get that experience and learn the concepts on the exam to get certified to help you get that experience and get those jobs. Now, it is a good idea to get familiar with what you're trying to attain here as far as familiarity with different things on the platform and as well um, some of the experience that would be helpful to have or, or is not required. And here are some of the commonly asked questions about the actual exam, what the passing score would be, registration costs, retake fee, length of the exam, and then as well, things such as no hard copy or online materials may be referenced during the exam. Your exam will be proctored, meaning someone will be watching you, whether it's on-site at a testing location or online through online testing means. There are no prerequisites for the platform app builder. Here are some training resources from Salesforce as far as trail mixes on Trailhead, super badges on Trailhead, as well as paid courses of their own, which are much more expensive than mine, but I digress. And then as well, here is where we get into the meat of the actual structure of the exam. The exam outline gives you the five knowledge areas on the exam, as well as the weighting of each, which should equal 100%. So we have Salesforce fundamentals, data modeling and management, business logic and process automation, user interface, and then finally app deployment. Now you can hit any of these arrows here and that'll toggle down and give you the bullet points which are known as learning objectives, these different bulleted points. And then you'll find as well typically in each of these bulleted learning objectives, there may be more than one topic. And so there are actually, I believe, 26 learning objectives across the five knowledge areas, last I checked. But there's many more topics than 26. You'll notice that, for example, just picking one at random here, given a scenario, determine the capabilities and use cases for workflow, flow, and process builder. So that would contain three different topics as far as I can tell. That would be workflow, meaning workflow rules in Salesforce. Flows would be using the flow builder. And then finally processes via the process builder. Those are three different tools you can use for automation in Salesforce. And so even though this is one bullet point, we've got three different topics there. So going back to the top here for the exam outline, really the Salesforce fundamentals, you have some options when thinking about approaching the platform app builder certification. For those of you that don't have any certifications yet, you have the option of either pursuing the Salesforce administrator certification to learn the fundamentals of the platform, or trying to dive right into platform app builder. And there are some fundamental things on this exam, not as much as on the administrator exam. You may want to consider first attaining the administrator certification before trying to pursue platform app builder. That'll give you a firmer grasp on this first knowledge area here as far as Salesforce fundamentals go. As you can see, it accounts for 23% of your exam score. And some of these things are really conceptual in nature, but require a lot of hands-on experience to really appreciate the boundaries of things such as declarative customizations on the platform, declarative meaning clicks instead of code, and then we've got programmatic customizations, which would mean code-based customizations on the platform. Some of these other things are really straightforward, such as extending your org using the App Exchange, that is Salesforce's App Store. But then you get into some really tricky topics around security and access. And so you will need to have a firm understanding of things such as profiles, permission sets, org-wide defaults, sharing rules, manual sharing, team access, and more. 
and they are looking for you to have the ability to restrict and extend object access, record access, and field access. Those are three different things, not only restricting but extending access to objects, records, and fields. So that's quite a lot implied in this one bullet point here, a lot of different topics. As well, given a set of business requirements, you need to be able to determine the appropriate sharing solution. Then you get into things related to reports and dashboards, and that would be creating different types of reports, you will learn a lot of that on the admin exam side of things. Report types, those would be custom report types that you create, as well as dashboards. And then given a set of requirements, determine the appropriate global, and then as well object-specific actions and layouts to optimize the Salesforce mobile user experience. And then finally, describe the customizations and use cases for Chatter. So that would all be considered the 23% side of things for Salesforce fundamentals. Now, there's other knowledge areas that account for a similar weighting, such as data modeling and management. And you will need to understand object-oriented principles and how that relates to Salesforce and determining the appropriate data model given certain scenarios on the exam. And these are scenario-based questions for sure. They're very wordy. They can be kind of complex to really discern what they're actually asking sometimes. That's why it's so key that you understand the underlying concepts rather than just trying to memorize questions and answers through practice tests. And the way that you can understand these concepts would be getting hands-on experience, and that's why my video courses, I try to give you a lot of hands-on experience. Now back to data modeling and management, and remember, these kind of go in logical order. You've got to understand the fundamentals of the platform before you can hope to get into data modeling and management. And I have found that these exam guides are laid out pretty logically by Salesforce, but given a scenario, explain the capabilities of the various relationship types and the implications of each on record access, user interface, and reporting. You'll find that some topics are repeated across multiple knowledge areas, such as reporting is mentioned here in data modeling and management, as well as inside of Salesforce fundamentals. But these different relationship types, such as master detail and lookup, you'll need a firm grasp on that as well to do well in the data modeling and management side of things. As well, given a scenario, determine the considerations when selecting or changing a field data type. So this is where you'll need to be concerned with potential data loss and some of the implications of switching things around from one field data type to another, such as from lookup to master detail and long text, to regular text, etc., etc. As well, you need to be familiar with the schema builder, the capabilities and considerations of that particular tool inside of Salesforce as well as determining the options and considerations when importing and exporting data, including the capabilities of external data sources. And you'll notice that business logic and process automation is the most heavily weighted on the exam. And there's a lot of different scenario-based questions you'll find related to business logic and process automation, such as using formula fields to meet business requirements, as well as capabilities, use cases, and implications of roll-up summary fields. We also get into validation rules here to meet stated business requirements as well as the standard four different automation tools currently available in Salesforce such as approval processes, workflow rules, flows, and process builder. Now there is mention out there in the ecosystem that Salesforce is going to eventually retire the ability to create new workflow rules and process builders and flow is the future and that is still far off in the horizon though and so at the time of this recording you do need to know about workflow rules process builder as well not just focus on flows and in the real world there's many orgs that have and heavily rely on these tools and so they're not going away anytime soon so it'll definitely be included on the exam and is why it's reflected on the exam guide as well so finally recommending a solution to automate business processes while avoiding errors in automation keep in mind where data starts to move and become dynamic and things can happen as far as updates time-based or immediate and so this is logically the highest weighted area of the exam and it can be considered the most complex now once you get the underpinnings of the fundamentals you get your data model and your management going there as well as your business logic and process automation you start to get more on the front end with the user interface and it's here where you need to be able to describe the user interface customization options bear in mind that this will be not only for desktop but for mobile as well you also demonstrate the capabilities and use cases for custom buttons, links, and actions. And then when we get into declarative options, anytime you see declarative, just know that means clicks instead of code. 
as far as incorporating Lightning components in an app as well as programmatic customizations available for incorporating custom Lightning components in an application as well. So you'll be using the App Builder, dragging in those Lightning components, whether those are standard components or custom ones that you've created, all right? So that rounds out the user interface, 17% waiting. Finally, we get into the deployment side of things, and this is where you get into the different types of sandboxes, how they correspond or correlate with the application lifecycle, as well as demonstrating knowledge, viability, and troubleshooting when using change sets. That's how you can move things from one org to another and deploy them. A lot can go wrong there, so you also need to be able to troubleshoot things in order to do well with this particular knowledge area. And then finally, the final two learning objectives would be use cases and considerations when using unmanaged and managed packages. And then finally, given a scenario, determine the appropriate deployment plan. So we go end to end from conceptual fundamental things on the Salesforce platform into the specifics of the data model and the objects involved and the management therein. Then the movement of that data related to the object model and process automation. And then the more front end side of things would be user interface considerations. And finally, how to deploy things from one sandbox into production, for example. Now, there's other things in the exam guide, such as code of conduct that you agree to abide by, as well as consequences for violating those agreements. And then finally, information around maintaining your certification. So that is a very high level overview of what you'll find in the platform app builder exam guide. And so I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe and then let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to learn about Salesforce and I just might make it my next video. And until then, I'll see you in the cloud.